Making life worth living and retirement worth having is really about having people in our lives who love us just as we are. Loving us just as we are means they see our best traits. They forgive our little nuances. They allow us to be livid when it's time to be livid. They allow us to be sad when it's time to be sad. They allow us to smile. They allow us to have joy. They allow us to have fun. They allow us whatever it is that we feel emotionally. But factually, we are looking at people in a different way today. Many people use emotions interfering with their life that they should have in this world. Now let's talk about that a moment in terms of a regular concept. There's a person who is literally a customer service representative. Their sole job is to provide positive customer service for the individual who's calling into an organization. That individual may not utilize their emotions about themselves and how they feel to literally interact with someone else. Is that not true or is that true? You see, literally, when someone starts to make it about me and how someone personally is feeling, as opposed to looking at what are the roles and responsibilities that I'm accountable for, that makes all the difference in the world. Many young people today are utilizing the internet to Google others, to voyeur on people's lives, and to think they literally know someone's motives, intentions, or purposes for whatever they might post. The entire world watches President Trump blast off at every little bitty quip that is sent his way. A lot of the things he says in response are not exactly what most people in the Republican Party would suggest that he respond with, but he is literally a multimillionaire, billionaire probably, and therefore he has the rights to say whatever he feels in relationship to that individual moment of time. A few minutes later, someone else says something else, and he responds in a different manner to that person. Because literally, moments of time make all the difference in the world to people. In a particular situation, in a moment of time today, a literal man who is homeless walked to a church. He was led there at a particular moment in time by his faith in the Lord. He literally needed to produce for himself some food for the day because his funds are really low and he was needing help. He walked to that church. He rang its bell. A lovely female voice came on to their electronic technology with a video camera, literally violating his rights, taking and capturing his image and recording him probably, but she did a lovely job welcoming him and saying, listen, I'm not there right now, but I'm sure that one of the people in our church would be more than happy to help you with this particular simple little inexpensive $10 sale. You see, that little $10 sale would have allowed the man to eat for the day. So he waited for a while and nobody really came. So he thought, well, maybe this is a joke. A lot of churches sort of say they help people, but they don't always help people in the moment. They focus on whether or not it's an insurance issue or whether or not it's a, a probability issue or whether or not the person is in the same line exactly philosophically or them or not. But this little man was told by that welcoming voice that someone in that church surely would produce $10 to buy his little book. And when he got finally a young person who was too young to be a pastor in his mind, literally coming to the door, inviting him in to talk, to meet him and all this sort of stuff, that young man did something that a lot of old pastors do. They act like they have no cash on them whatsoever. I don't know one man of any kind, shape or form, including my own Japanese little son, who would walk anywhere in the world without a little cash in his pocket, at the very least $20, unless he was morbidly in impoverished. Now, what do I mean by that? Most people do a lot of things with credit cards today, absolutely true, but most men are trained at a young age to carry a little cash with them for emergency situations. I know one little shoe vendor who owns the entire shoe company who always has a hidden $100 bill in his wallet for that very little occasion. It was something we talked about at length in a men's Bible studies class. But here this man was, standing in front of a young man who literally acted as though he didn't have any cash on him. The lie was more than obvious to the, the bookseller. So he, the bookseller simply said, is there someone else perhaps here, since there's a couple cars in the lot, who might be willing to purchase my book as the lady on the intercom mentioned to me, which allowed me to feel okay about coming within your facility here. And in that moment, he went to go invite the man to go back through dreary halls low-lit rooms to meet a pastor somewhere deep within the church. 
most people are not going to feel comfortable with that approach. So the bookseller said, you know, it's okay. I'll wait here. If you bring him out, I'll be more than happy to talk with him. You see, in life, people have to make a little bit of effort to make people feel safe and comfortable and willing to talk about anything important at all. So when this man literally went to get him, and it took a little while, and then he started to well, maybe I should go again. And then literally out came the pastor, and hands were shaken, and, and, and typical manly sort of welcoming hospitality occurred. And then literally the man asked, you know, represented himself, which was good because no one likes to have someone talk about them or for them and make it as though they know how to sell a person's opportunities in life. So that young man at least did the right thing in that and allowed the bookseller to try again to sell that one little book. All he wanted to do was sell one little book to put it in their library so it would be there for exposure when the next set of books came out, the newer versions of the books came out. But literally, as many people who write books know, you don't always make millions of dollars off a book initially. You have to do the grunt work, the legwork. You have to produce marketing. You have to go places. You have to meet people. You have to try and make an impact. And how hard is it really for a church group of people to produce $10? I don't think it's really that hard. Even if there was only two men, they could have each possibly have produced $5 or they could have offered a credit card. Because today we have technology that would allow someone to email a link to pay $10 that would have provided this man an opportunity to eat for the day. But let's continue on with the story. That pastor literally wanted to first peruse the book to determine whether or not he liked the way that it looked or liked the way it laid out. And that makes sense because we do that in bookstores. We look at books, we skim the pages, we decide whether or not the, the texting, the fonting, the layout and design, it fits our souls. And then literally we make a decision about what book or books to purchase. So the man said, sure, take a look at it. Then he asked him questions. The pastor sort of interrogated him asking him a little bit about his faith walk and how did he come to writing this book and what is the book about and all these sort of stuff. So in fair kind, the man who is much older than this pastor, maybe two times his, in his age, literally put the other man, the pastor, through the passage and asked him about his faith walk and about how they literally do philanthropic things. And he, Now, most men literally know this, that faith, life is about a life balance of sorts from the beginning to the end, from faith to family, to finance, to fitness, to fellowship, to fun, to philanthropy, if we steal the PHs and ignore that that's not really an F in terms of the alphabet, utilizing that in that concept of life balance, the seven or eight areas of life balance that a person must have in order to feel fulfilled as an individual. Spirituality is a huge part of that. The ability to serve and do work and earn for a living is another major portion of our lives. Let's face it, we spend literally hundreds of hours away from our families going to work. So this little man only needed $10 to do two things, actually. To provide for himself a morsel of food for the day and to put gas in his car so that he could keep on his mission in life, which was to put one little book in each church that was in the community where he was staying at that moment of time. You see, it's moments of time like this that provide for the impoverished. It's moments of time like this that give a man hope that he can go on further in life when no one else cares enough to allow him the rights to be himself. And that sometimes happens. It happens with our teenage runaways. They feel misunderstood. They feel unheard. They feel not well. But a man of maturity, a man of years beyond 40, is not a child, knows precisely who and what makes him feel safe and welcome in the world. But there are people literally out there, like this pastor, who will put him through all this pacing, 30, taking 30 minutes practically of his time, and then literally at the end of that time said, no, I don't think I'll have time to read this before I share it with my congregation. Now let's talk about the two problems with those responses. One, as a marketing movement, he was more concerned about where this man went to church, literally, than whether or not this man was on God's path. You see, the bookseller literally goes where God calls him to go, listens to sermon of men at that day that God calls him to do so for whatever reason, for his own education, where he is in his spiritual journey, to maybe help that pastor to grow a little bit in terms of the rebuke he might get, in terms of response to questions a man might ask with regard to a sermon well listened to. But let's get back to this marketing moment in time. A lovely, perfectly written, perfectly scripted woman told this man, 
that someone in the church would be willing to buy his book. But what happened was a lie. Neither of the men who came to the door, who literally probably had $10 to their name, would purchase his book. The man left somewhat saddened, somewhat realizing he wasn't going to eat for the day. You see, it's moment in time that make all the difference in the world. Now let's take another man's story. He's literally having some car troubles in life. He can't tell whether it's the car itself, whether it's a mechanic who failed and lied about how good his mechanical skills were, or whether it's literally someone stalking him, hazing him, and harassing him because he is impoverished. And there are some people in the world who just think that's the funniest thing in the entire universe. And they literally will do things to damage a person's rights to their own property. He's kind of thinking it's the latter because he went someplace before this little car trouble occurred, and all of a sudden he had a problem. But we won't presume to know what really happened. God totally does. But he went to purchase a vehicle or purchase a tire with a loan that he had to procure from someone that he loves, but it's very difficult to get an inexpensive loan. Let's talk about how inexpensive a loan is for a tire. A tire today literally costs underneath $200, mostly just above $100 to $150. Now that's how impoverished this man was, that he literally doesn't have any credit cards that he can use anymore because he maxed them out on the last tire he had to purchase. He literally is hoping that he's not getting overdraft charges because he's been managing his money away from technology because technology always has a cost in terms of time, in terms of money, and in terms of resources. Now let's continue with the story. He was literally in a shop with strangers. The man behind the counter was in his 20s and a very poor salesperson and exceptionally inappropriate in his customer service. We'll talk about that in another podcast, another audio cast, I mean. But literally, he was standing there $20 short with his tire problem. In another town, months earlier, he was able to purchase some tires for a little bit of a discount because the man understood his plight and knew he needed tires to keep going on his way. But this 20-year-old man, who had just probably gotten this job in management, literally didn't understand that he could have made a difference in someone's life today. But lo and behold, there was a woman in the shop getting her own car repaired. A woman of seasoning, a woman probably headed into her 50s. And she apparently was sitting there feeling moved in her soul that she could produce the little extra money for this man. A total stranger just needing some help to go on further. And this gal, this lovely sold person, thought, you know what? I have a little extra money. And 15 to $20 is not much. But literally, she apparently took a risk. She violated the man's rights in that moment in terms of he asked her about whether or not he could sell her something to produce the difference that he needed in order to pay for that tire in full and beyond his professional way. Because in this world today, we need transportation. We don't live in communities anymore where the town is literally totally walkable. Most of those towns have dried up. People are looking for big box stores, they're looking for brand name items, and they're not looking for the little guy who puts food on his table anymore. But this lovely woman said, well, I'd rather just give you the book or give you the money and have it be done. And this man, being an honorable man, said, I'd really like to give you something in exchange because I can't take a handout. I must earn my way. That's what men do. That's what women do. So she compromised and said, okay. He then had produced, in a simple conversation with a lovely Christian individual, the opportunity to purchase a tire that allowed him to continue on his journey. Now, that 20-something salesperson tried to sell him everything under the sun beyond that without permission. He didn't ask permission to look over the car. He didn't ask permission to put things in the records. He didn't ask permission to do anything else. And he sort of, you know, squeamishly said, well, look, I already gave you a deal. Well, you know, there's a difference between maturity and immaturity. And the reality is he had nothing else to muster. And he literally said, look, I just need to know, can your company allow my business a corporate loan for $20 for 30 net days? Thinking, gosh, surely a company of that size would be willing to go right on the spot, go, no problem. I'm going to process this right now. If you need 30 days or less to do this, we understand. Sometimes people are short in life. But that young man told this book person, this individual, this person who was sort of struggling and didn't have all the money 
for the tire because he wasn't fully given enough for the loan that he had to borrow, as he's struggling through life and getting himself back on his feet, that that young man said, no, it'll take two weeks. We're going to do all these background checks. And the man just thought, wow, all this extra red tape, all this extra process, literally for the loan of $20 to make a difference in a moment in time for someone. Now, as a marketing professional, I can tell you what a missed moment that is. There was probably six to 10 boys in that shop, all making a living, all earning, all literally being trusted with the vehicles of every person who brings a vehicle into that shop. Let's talk about what they're trusted with. They're trusted with their pers- the body safety of the people who they are doing the work for. That's why they have certifications for mechanics that most mechanics go through. They are trusted with the property that is literally the vehicle itself, the lawful property of the owner themselves. They're also trusted with the property that might be within and carried within vehicles. And let's face it, we buy vehicles for different reasons. We buy economy cars because we had got to do a lot of driving. We want the best guys gas mileage, but they all have a trunk to tote stuff. We buy SUVs because we have to port a lot of stuff for our work, for our sales jobs, for the things that we do in life, or just literally to move and help a friend or a family person move. We have these type of vehicles for that purpose. We have them because we've got large teenagers and they need more leg room. We produce these responsibilities to mechanics that literally we're entrusting them with not only our lives on the road, but we're literally trusting them with our property, which is our lawful right to our vehicle. And we're trusting them with our property of every little piece of item that we have materialistically purchased that might literally be within that vehicle. So moving on to this marketing moment in time, and that's really what this one is really going to be about of marketing minutes. Let's look back to where we began, that a pastor failed to represent his organization for $10. Now think about it, a marketing moment in time that only cost him $10, but a story that could cost him millions in terms of funding, in terms of employment, in terms of jobs for other people, in terms of volunteers willing to serve that organization. Then we've got this lady who didn't know one thing about this man at all other than that he was in a bind. She looked him over, she sized him up, she kind of smirked at him the first time she saw him. She probably thought he was a fuddy-duddy old man, but in talking with him, I think she realized he was just a gentle soul needing a little help in life. And she, with her own care, produced money for him, and he did, in fact, give to her a book. Whether or not she'll literally read it or not, it doesn't matter. The fact is that she was moved in her soul to do something at that moment in time by the Lord she said and professed to believe in. That as a Christian, she didn't feel like she could let this man go without that $15, literally 14 whatever it was, that he needed. And then let's talk about the young man representing that company, earning his business and being trusted with his vehicle tires, the most important part beyond the engine of a car. That that young man couldn't think beyond his own space of that sale to literally go, you know what? We've got six guys in this shop and each one of them will be happy to come up with $2 and just come back and see us the next time you need another tire. You see, he literally could have produced the money out of his own wallet as a manager. He could have written it off on his taxes. He could have done a lot of things, but maturity was not in with him at a 20-year-old or a mid-20-year-old life. The assistant manager had actually sold that man on going to that shop in the previous situation. But she lied on something too, which the man noticed later. She told him there wasn't certain fees for something that he was pretty sure was required by the law, but that literally was still on the paperwork that she said it wasn't available. Now, did that dissuade the man? No. What he saw was someone trying to make a sale, trying to make it simpler in this person's mind to make a decision. But legally, she had to write down all the notes of what was required. Now, a marketing moment of time would be that I could tell the story of exactly who that company was, exactly who those people were, so that they could feel the shame of the lost marketing moment. You see, that $15 that that man was short was a $15 marketing moment. $15 to produce an incredible story for their marketing campaigns for their company, or $15 to produce 250 types of negative stories of working with that firm. The same for the church. 
that that man in no way in hell was ever going to return to that place, even if he was in town, the pastor literally said, I'd love to sit down with you for coffee. Why on earth would a man being rejected for the sale to purchase food and gas for a day in his life, would he ever come back to talk with that pastor? You see, these are missed moments of time. Those are marketing minutes that people forget about, that there's always an opportunity cost. The woman who answered that electronic video phone was superb, but she made the promise that one of those men in that facility would pluck $10 out of their wallet or out of church funds or petty cash and purchase a book regardless of how good, bad, or indifferent it was about the Lord. You see, Making moments matter for people is about not only taking back talk, but it's about being aware of what other people in your organization promise to someone. So the lie was actually triplicate, that she said someone would purchase and absolutely she would make sure someone would help, that this, the first young man didn't understand his liability and therefore there was a lie that he would help because he opened the door. And three, the pastor totally failed completely to prove he had any Jesus in him at all, and here's why. He went out of his way to put his arms down after being crossed in front of him and basically physically, as we all know, closed off from someone, to talk about his, his leadership, to talk about how they serve the community, and literally highlighted all the aspects that was literally something that the older man had just talked to him about what his book was about. You see, people in that age demographic don't realize how bad their skill sets are socially, but at the same time, they don't literally realize that they're representing a huge church. The man who was selling the book didn't even pay attention to what the church name was when he went there because the Lord led him there. The Lord is always leading this man to a place for an experience, to a place to see how people truly are in their souls about him, or literally to have help from godly people. This has been Blake Ensign talking about magic and mayhem, but really this particularly storyline is probably more about marketing minutes. So forgive the use of an old photo of me in Marketing Minutes. I think I'll probably label this video with that one instead. You see, it's moments in time that create for us marketing opportunities or marketing nightmares on behalf of our companies. Marketing Minutes are those moments that allow that person to walk away from our firm having been so served beyond the call of duty that they tell everyone in the world about it. Marketing mayhem, if you will, Marketing nightmares, if you will, are those moments in time when our people fail in simple ways they could help someone that gets told to every little person who ever mentions that firm's name. You see, marketing can be costly. The marketing that we're talking about here is reminding me of a story from the late Steve Shapiro's book, The Gift of Listening. He told a story about how he went in to a shop to order some food based off a coupon he received in the mail. And the man said that they would do it, but they, he literally was going to give him an older piece of fish for the coupon. The man decided to not eat there because he wasn't expecting old fish for a discounted price. But he wanted to end up doing was he literally went off and told over 250,000 people in his speaking series about that missed moment of marketing time. Think about that. That missed moment of time only cost the owner of that shop $8. It was the $8 that he wouldn't provide him a good quality of fish. But that story was literally told to hundreds of thousands of people who are unlikely to ever eat at Hana Seafood, which was the name of that restaurant. And I'll tell you, I haven't listened to my favorite CD, which is by the late Steve Shapiro, The Gift of Listening, in many moons and many years. I have always in my life, since I got it back in 2000, tried to listen to that CD every single quarter, at least, if not every single month, to remind me about the importance of listening to story and deciding how do I want my personal marketing to be in these moments of time? You see, sometimes a man like me will do what his job has literally been in the past. We'll push on people a little bit to help them to see their rhetoric. You see, rhetoric is the stuff we say to ourselves about what we do in life and the stories we tell to others about to pr promote ourselves in PR. 
but we have to prove it in moments of time. And only a few people in that man's life proved it. By the end of the day, the man did not produce a sale, not one $10 sale, no matter where he went. Because the Christians in the world lied about their love and care for the impoverished. He tried different approaches at different people to see if he could produce a simple sale, literally a 50% off sale on his book, because the new books are coming. It's normally a $20 book, and he was trying to sell it for $10. In one church, he tried to sell it for $5. The receptionist literally was so off track in her role in that moment of time that she didn't even bother to consider getting $5 out of her purse to purchase the book. I bet that pastor would be pretty disenfranchised to learn that. But what I really see it is, is lack of training of how moments in time make all the difference in the world of people exploring churches and places to come to belong. This has been Blake Henson of Marketing Minutes and Magic and Mayhem, talking about the magic of God when we follow him and the mayhem that comes from people who don't listen, who don't pray, who don't say, if Jesus was here in this moment of time, what would he literally want me to do?